Hello everyone, David Godibadze here, and today I'm going to talk about the reaching out the remote host that doesn't have the gateway. Now, why do you need that? Sometimes when you deploy projects or someone else, people are making mistakes, and sometimes they don't put the gateway at all, or they put the wrong gateway, or there's an industrial device that never had the gateway, but you need to reach the device remotely. Here's the scenario. We have main computer here, main office, and we want to reach out this computer, but this computer doesn't have the gateway. So there is no way for us to send this traffic here and to receive the returning traffic back to this computer because there is no gateway and this computer doesn't know how to send traffic back to Unify so that the traffic goes to the VPN, main office, and then the computer. And we are going to fix that. But first of all, let me make sure that we cannot connect to the remote device as of now. This is our main office. We have Unify portal open here that we can control UCG Ultra and Unify Express. And the remote computer is this guy here. 10.2.1.10. And as you can see, there is no gateway. So if I try to connect to this IP from the main office, it won't work. This is the remote desktop client. And let's try to connect 10.2.1.10 which is the remote computer. And as you can see, I cannot connect. Why? Because there is no next hop for the returning traffic on the remote computer. Now let's try and configure the network address translation to still access the remote location. And here's how it's going to work. I'm going to tell this router here, Unify Express, that anytime this traffic comes to the router and leaves from this interface, it doesn't matter where it goes, translate it into this IP, which is the interface IP. Now, because the interface IP is within the same subnet as the IP from this computer, the computer doesn't need the gateway to return the traffic to this IP. Then the NAT will do the network address translation again back to the original IPs and send the traffic back to the VPN and back to the main office. And we'll configure that now. To configure the NAT, you need to update your network application because latest version supports custom NAT configuration, which wasn't there at all. You couldn't even disable the NAT before. Now, before creating NAT configuration, we want to create the object for the remote side. Let's go, no, for the main side, should I say. Let's go into settings, profiles, IP groups, create, and let's create the subnet. Let's name it main office subnet. And our main office subnet would be this guy here. This is the network. I'm going to put it here, slash 24 and add. And add. Now let's go into routing, NAT, and add create entry. Source, and let's do remote to LAN NAT. Protocol. I want to translate all the protocols. Now, interface. This is from which interface traffic will leave. In our case, this is the interface traffic leaves, and that interface is LAN. So I'm going to choose LAN here. You might have the default instead of LAN, because this is the network name, actual network name. I changed the default network name into LAN because it makes sense. And now we want to choose the IP address to which we want to translate. In our case, it's going to be interface IP 10.2.1.1. And the destination can be anything because leaving the traffic from the LAN interface, the only destination is there the LAN subnet, local LAN subnet. So I don't care to choose specific IP address. And I want to translate all the traffic towards all the computers because this is a temporary fix to reach the computer. If you want to reach only one computer, but nothing else, because you have running the service between locations, you may want to put the IP address of a specific host. In our case, it's going to be entire LAN subnet. And add. Now, what I want to mention here is that, unfortunately, even though the protocol says here all, it doesn't work for the ICMP. So you cannot ping the host using this configuration. Even if you create a new NAT configuration with ICMP protocol in it only, it still doesn't work. Probably some bug in the firmware, I don't know, but it should work based on this configuration. It just doesn't work. So you cannot rely on the ping to see if the configuration works. 
I'm talking about the 8.4.6.2 on the Unify Express. On different devices, it might work. I don't know. Now let's open the remote desktop again and try to connect. And as you can see, I can connect. Now I'm connected to the remote location. Remote location doesn't have the gateway. I can repeat this command. Doesn't have the gateway. And if I check Netstat to see what's the source IP I'm reaching out this computer, you'll see it. it's the gateway IP address of the Unify Express. That one. Netstat nat find string 3389. 3389 is the remote desktop port. Find string means that uh, instead of showing all the connections, filter it and show only this string. I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, we are connected to the RDP port on the local computer, dot 10, using the RDP port. And our source IP is dot 1. However, if you go into main office and you check what's the source IP of this computer, which we use to connect to remote location, it's 176. And if you check Netstat here, you'll have the same picture instead of, but instead of that one, you'll see that 176 because that's the source IP of this computer reaching out to 3389 port on the remote location. This is remote location, but our original source IP is 176. However, after we did the NAT on the Unify Express, now it's that one. And this is how you can reach the remote location from any location. It, it can be VPN, it can be a WireGuard VPN, it can be just a simple routing, it doesn't matter. But on the last hop, if it supports the net, you can achieve these results. Thanks for watching.